So here I am reinstalling my GP15 antenna. It's 8 feet long. Uh, I actually should have done all of this stuff on the ground. The coax has to fit through that small little tube you see by my elbow that's already on the pole, mounted on the pole. Uh, but that would have been a whole lot easier to feed that in later than to do all this on a ladder. So I screwed in the coax already and now I'm getting the weatherproof uh, coax tape to put on it. And uh, you'll see a picture of the box here come up in the corner. So this coax seal is the weatherproofing. Uh, pretty easy to use, but uh, it took me a while on the ladder there. The, it was also, uh, the antenna was wobbling because I was trying to hold it up, and then I got my son to hold the other end. Uh, you should have a, another person there to help you if you're putting up an antenna, especially on a pole if you have to go up on the ladder. Because if you get stuck, you can be in precarious situations. Uh, I'm squeezing the sealant tape around after I've wound it, pressing it against everything. Now I'm going to stick it in the hole and the tree gets in the way. Uh, I have two, the two radials on it. Uh, therefore the 2 meter and 70 centimeter. I'm going to put the 6 meter radial on in a minute. There's a screw you put in the side that uh, holds it into the bracket. And uh, it, just have to line it up a little bit, screw it in, tighten it down. Uh, so I had most of the tools ready. When I put the radial in, I needed to get a different tool. So I'm checking one of the radials there. Actually, I'm still screwing down the thing. Okay, now I'm going to add the 6 meter radial. Now I've had this antenna up on the other side of the house, uh, but the coax was uh, drooped along the ground, so I took it down. Uh, and it's been down for a couple years, and I've tripped over this antenna a couple times. So you can see the, the radial kind of wobbles its way in. Uh, I had bent the threads. The shaft with the threads on it so it's kind of interesting I don't I would have already had it in place if I hadn't bent it because of that I get uh, distracted about the mounting hole the drain hole in this and I've already set the radio to be resonant on the frequencies I want it when it was on the other side of the house so now I'm using electrical tape to tape the coax cable to the the pole uh, and not putting too much tension on it against the uh, mounting bracket that it's going through. I'm going to do that a couple places up and down the pole. There's my son We're getting ready to okay. uh, erect it. Now the pole I use is a, a fence, not a fence post, but a fence rail. Uh, they work pretty good. They're 10 feet long. And the bracketing are made out of L brackets and a U bracket. Uh, the bottom bracket is bent. You'll see pictures of that later. Uh, it's kind of a fit where it kind of jams in there if you're not careful with it. So this took us a while to get in there. Again, another reason to have another person help. So here's the bracketing that I used. So I've got an L bracket. I should have drilled the holes bigger, a little bigger, because the U clamp is, the threads are kind of stuck in there. And then this is just the L bracket that I turned up, so it's going up inside the pipe. It's a little loose there.
So we've mounted the Comet GP15 antenna and we're going to hook it into the radio. So I'm now inside. I've hooked my coax running through the uh, ceiling into a duplexer, the uh, Comet CF530. One side is 90 megahertz to 1.3. So that'll be the 50 megahertz range for 6 meter. And then I have 125 to 470. So that'll be uh, VHF and UHF. So I got to make sure that I'm on the correct side when I run it, when I go through the SWR meter. So I've got 125 to 470. Let's see what those look like, should look like, off the antenna. So we've got the uh, 2 meter, and it's just an arc. And then on the 440, 70 centimeter, you see it goes up, down, up, down, up. Okay, we're going to see that. So we want to take these readings near the radio. Because SWR is about the radio. What I see near the antenna, which was a little bit worse readings. So I'm going to turn my meter on. I'll rotate the video so you can read this right side up. Okay, so we're on UHF right now. So one side of the band is... I'll start at 420. So we're reading here for the megahertz and here for the SWR. We also have an SWR meter right here and we can just watch that. If it gets up to 1.5 then we know to look up here. This reads a little higher than this does. So there we are at 418. We're at 1.1. That's great SWR. And I'm going to watch the meter as I dial up. Everything's still below 1.5. Okay, we're a little high there, so let's see what it is. The digital reads 1.3, so we're good. Still dialing through. 1.4, still good SWR. Still good. You can see it's going up and down, up and down. Everything's staying below 1.4. Anything 1.5 or below, I'm going to speed this up so you guys can watch it. Okay, now we're at 455, which is above the ham band. We're all good. So this is good throughout the entire band on 70 centimeter. So I just hit that button. That takes us back to our VHF. That goes from 144 to 148. So I'll dial down to 144. Again, watching the SWR. 1.1, 1.0. That's as low as you can go. 1.1, 1, up to 1.2, 1.3, and we're already at the top of the band, 148. So we're good there. Now if I switch over to 6 meter, dial to 50, you'll see my SWR says greater than 31. Well, silly me, I'm on the wrong side of this. So I have to switch out the cables into here. I'll be back in a minute. So for six meters, six meters is a wide band. I don't think there's any antenna that can cover the whole band. That's why you see these different uh, SWR paths. And then this is a, uh, not really a cut chart, but how long the radial should be. So based on the frequency you want it to be at, you come up here, go over, and it tells you how long this measurement should be. Uh, I'm going to have to redo that anyway, because I didn't put the drain hole facing down. Uh, 
I should have done that, but I got distracted. So let's see what it's at. So we're going to, whenever you switch the coax out, you should turn it off. So we're going to turn it back on. And go, this is the range I want to hit. So we're going to go down to 50. Okay, so we're at 49. SWR is at 1.9. That's too high. So there we are at 50.1 and we're at 1.7. Still a little too high. Uh, I could probably operate at that, but it's not too good for the radio. So we go up and our SWR is less. We're now at 5.5. We're still at 1.6. Now we drop to 1.5. So that's good, but I'm right at the top of where I want to be. So let's see where 1.1 or 1.0 is. So I continue to dial. Now I'm going down. And 0 is 51.45. So I do need to move that radial uh, in or out a little bit based on the chart. So what are we going into? This is the Yaesu 857D. And it's got two antenna connections on the back. If you come down here, you can see one is for 2 meter and 70 centimeter, and one is for 6 meter or HF, because 6 meter is actually a VHF band. So I just plug the two of these and the proper ports in the radio, plug my uh, head into the radio, give it power, and I'm ready to go.